Rin Berry. Rin Berry. Where are you? Author Rin Berry. Come on, our treasure. Rin Berry, are you around? I've known him for many, 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 many years. And uh, <clears throat> uh, Rin Berry uh, is the historical advisor to the North American Vegetarian Society and is, in general, a treasure, no question, uh, in the vegan community. He is the author of so many wonderful books. And, and people know him uh, in the green market. Uh, maybe not lately, but... <laughs> um, made a very visible face to veganism in New York City and the green market. Uh, he's the author of The New Vegetarians, Famous Vegetarians, Food for the Gods, Hitler, Neither Vegetarian Nor Animal Lover, and um, Annual editions, updated editions of the Vegan Guide to New York City. Uh, he, we love that, right? It's a great, great, great resource. Uh, he co-authored Becoming Raw, okay, an essential guide, and has written numerous articles on veganism, including some that stand as official encyclopedia entries. That's pretty amazing. Uh, he's a scholar extraordinaire, and what languages do you speak? He reads Greek and Latin, folks. French fluently, okay, English, of course. Oh, smattering of Portuguese. But the, the, the Greek and Latin is very important because he can go into ancient text and he can derive uh, information that has been lost or has just been put to the side and he can revive and and that is that's that's a treasure that's a treasure so uh, I it's a great great pleasure to give you Rin Berry and uh, he's a very intellectual uh, person but he's gonna try his best to give a rousing speech <laughs> Long, long friend. Thanks, uh, Pam. It's a pleasure to be here, and uh, thanks for organizing this wonderful event. And thank you all for coming and paying such close attention. Uh, my topic for, these, uh, for this afternoon is uh, a hurried view of the history of vegetarianism in New York, New York State. Uh, and we'll begin uh, at the beginning. Uh, some of you may be surprised to learn that uh, vegetarianism begins not with the white Europeans, but actually with uh, Native Americans. Uh, according to uh, Verrazano, who uh, was an explorer, uh, uh, who arrived in the year 1609, uh, the Lenape Indians were uh, observing a largely vegetarian diet, and the staple of their diet was acorn mush and uh, that was uh, eked out with uh, fruits and vegetables, of course. So we, uh, we Europeans, uh, people of European descent, uh, have nothing on the uh, indigenous peoples who inhabited the New World. Many of the tribes were vegetarian, including the local Lenape Indians, who were sort of a subsidiary of the Algonquin group. Well, the first uh, white European to have a, a vegetarian uh, incident in New York was uh, none other than the founding father, one of our founding fathers, uh, Benjamin Franklin. Uh, he had turned vegetarian in his uh, late teens, and uh, it was on a voyage from uh, Boston to Philadelphia that he uh, actually became a, an apostate and abandoned his vegetarian diet, which was of two years duration. And this happened off the coast of Block Island, 
his his boat was uh, becalmed, you know, and uh, he noticed that the other passengers were were catching fish, and uh, they actually codfish, and he he observed that the cod fish were feeding on each other, you know, they passengers slid open the cod, and there was another cod inside, a smaller a smaller fish. Uh, cod, unfortunately, are carnivorous. And he, so he uh, made a very specious uh, deduction saying, oh, well, if, if fish can eat each other, then uh, this is the law of, of nature. So uh, I'm justified in uh, forsaking my vegetarian diet and re reverting to carnivorism. So that was the first uh, vegetarian incident among white Europeans, a rather unfortunate one. Uh, the next uh, uh, of any import was the uh, opening of the uh, water cures. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but starting in uh, the uh, mid 19th century, uh, there was a new form of uh, alternative medicine that sprang up to uh, treat people with uh, cold water, hydrotherapy. And for some reason, a concomitant of this hydrotherapy, called hydrotherapy, was a diet, a vegetarian or vegan diet. Very often it, was, it consisted mainly of raw food. And some of the earlier practitioners of this uh, water hydrotherapy, which became a, a real fad a very, uh, in New York City at the time, were uh, Mary Gov Nichols and uh, her uh, partner and uh, Joel Shu. Well, these are all forgotten names, unfortunately. And R. T. Troll. They uh, practiced a vegetarian diet and prescribed it for their patients. And, and uh, so this was a water cure for some reason. Perhaps, uh, perhaps because it was sort of baptismal in nature and it sort of uh, harked back to the original diet. Uh, which is, of course, in Genesis, the uh, our original diet, as we all know, was a raw food vegan diet. So uh, that's that may account for this uh, strange uh, uh, vegetarian diet uh, in the water cures. Uh, and I should also mention that in 1850, the first vegetarian society in the country was created right here in New York City. It was formed by some of these water cure operators, like Joel Shu and uh, Sylvester Graham, the inventor of, the, uh, of Graham flour and Graham bread, and uh, apocryphally uh, uh, imputed to be the inventor of uh, the Graham cracker, but not actually. Uh, so there was Sylvester Graham and the water cure operators, they, uh, and. Uh, Bronson Alcott, the father of Louisa May Alcott, they came to New York and formed the first vegetarian society in 1850. First in the country, so that's another New York first. Uh, then uh, there was another huge water cure establishment uh, that sprang up uh, in the 1860s in Danville, New York. And this was started by James Caleb Jackson. It was called Our Home, and Jackson was a vegan, a uh, self-proclaimed vegan, and he prescribed a vegan diet for his patients. And uh, among his most uh, illustrious, uh, one of his most illustrious patients was a woman by the name of Ellen White. Ellen White, who founded the, uh, an Adventist, okay. Great. Well, she uh, actually, after being treated by uh, by James Caleb Jackson, she, she converted to vegetarianism, and she decided to. Uh, her, actually, Jackson also healed her two sons of uh, diphtheria with water cure and a vegan diet. So she said, "I'm going to start a water cure of my own in uh, Battle Creek, Michigan." And uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with Battle, Battle Creek. And she, uh, her protege, a young man by the name of John Harvey Kellogg, uh, was being groomed to run the Battle Creek Sanitarium. So the Whites, Ellen White and her husband, paid for Kellogg 
to uh, attend medical school in New York, and it went, which he did. He went to Bellevue uh, Medical School, which was at the time probably one of the most prominent medical schools in the country. And while he was there, uh, being a vegetarian, being an Adventist, he found it very difficult to sustain himself as a vegetarian. So he uh, he made his own food. He had a, in his dormitory room. He prepared his own food and he foraged for ingredients. And actually, it was in his dormitory room that he invented the first ready-to-eat breakfast cereal. It wasn't cornflakes. It was. Uh, his own concoctions. Cornflakes came later on in his career. So he got his degree in, uh, in uh, uh, abdominal surgery. And then he uh, went to Europe to study with great, uh, the great surgeons like Arbuthnot Lane, who invented Lane, the Lane Kink, and uh, among, among others. Then he came back to Battle Creek and uh, became one of America's most uh, prominent uh, abdominal surgeons. And he also, uh, had, he had, and throughout his life, he lived to be 91, he had no mortalities as a, as a surgeon, which was re quite remarkable. Largely because A, he learned to, from uh, Arbuthnot Lane and others, to wash his hands before each surgery, which was not widely practiced at the time. It still, unfortunately, is not being practiced by physicians. They don't wash their hands. So that was one reason. The other reason is that he put his patients on a vegetarian diet prior to surgery. Very often the diet would cure the malady. So obviating the need for surgery altogether. Then uh, he was uh, experimenting with uh, food concoctions in his wife's kitchen and he and his brother William hit upon the, by accident, the uh, process of uh, tempering, uh, tempering cereal flakes and this gave rise to uh, flaked corn uh, and obviously the corn flake which is probably the world's most popular breakfast cereal uh, Kellogg went on to invent uh, the first uh, ersatz meats, the first meats made from wheat and soy and peanut butter. He invented peanut butter as well. And all of this really started in, uh, at Bellevue in his dormitory room. So that's another New York first. Uh, this Adventism, you know, the Adventist uh, water cure where he applied his trade and became the world's greatest surgeon, uh, where he invented cornflakes. All of this grew out of his New York experience at Bellevue. So we can claim uh, an indirect link to Kellogg's uh, fertile uh, inventive mind and his uh, prowess as a, uh, an, an abdominal surgeon. So uh, there are still more firsts connected with New York City. The first health food store was opened in uh, in, in the uh, in the country. Really, it was opened by a an immigrant from uh, Germany named Benedict Lust <coughs> in the early 1900s. The first vegetarian restaurant was opened in New York by a man named uh, Bernard McFadden. He's, he's largely forgotten today, but uh, at the time he was the country's most successful uh, publishing uh, tycoon. He was like William Randolph Hearst or, or uh, Rupert Murdoch of his time. Equally conservative in his views. <laughs> but he was, not only was he a vegetarian, but he was a, a raw foodist. And he, uh, he started uh, the first uh, Raw food uh, vegetarian restaurant. It was called. It was named after his uh, most successful magazine. He published a number of magazines, and this one was uh, what is often, unfortunately, referred to as a beefcake magazine. You know, which shows men flexing their muscles and striking poses 
semi-nude poses. Well, Kella, uh, McFadden was a superb physical specimen, and he often modeled uh, for shots in his magazine. But he is credited with founding the first uh, uh, vegetarian restaurant with heaps of raw food. And he himself was a raw food uh, practitioner. Uh, so McFadden, and he also later ran for president, and among his, uh, he actually uh, was a, a grade school dropout, he made good, but his English, his literary English was not of the best quality, so he hired a uh, writer, a ghost writer, to write his uh, columns and his encyclopedia entries, and it, this man's name was uh, Herbert Shelton. It may be unknown to you, but Herbert Shelton is the country's was the country's uh, founder of the Natural Hygiene Society and uh, a leading raw foodist who uh, subsequently was hounded. He was fired by McFadden for being so uh, such, for having such inflammatory views about diet, and also. Uh, he uh, drew the wrath of the American Medical Association because he had, he had a, uh, in his spare time, he treated patients by putting them on a raw food diet and putting them on fasts, water fasts. So he was ha sort of hounded out of New York and he moved to San, San Antonio, Texas, where he wrote a plethora of books, I think almost 50 books on uh, the raw food uh, diet. It was got known as natural hygiene at the time. So that's another New York uh, first. <clears throat> and then uh, at one of these uh, vegetarian conferences, which uh, was held in the uh, 1940s, uh, the uh, first uh, presidential uh, nominee uh, who ran on the vegetarian ticket William Holdridge uh, was uh, fielded at a uh, vegetarian conference, actually a natural hygiene conference in New York City. And he ran against Eisenhower, uh, General Eisenhower, in 1950. Uh, he lost, unfortunately. <laughs> but he was uh, the first vegetarian presidential candidate, also got his start in New York. Uh, then, uh, just moving right along, I know I'm a little behind time here. Uh, we had the tele first uh, radio personalities, Ed and Pekin Fitzgerald. Uh, Philip Kaplow founded the first vegetarian Zendo in Rochester, New York. Pamela Rice started the uh, Viva Veggie Society <laughs> and organized the first American Veggie Pride Parade. <laughs> I myself, <laughs> I myself started the first uh, uh, exclusively vegetarian. Uh, and vegan restaurant guide. You know, there had been other guides in the past, but they uh, they were vegetarian friendly. They included carnivorous restaurants. Mine, mine is still the only guidebook that is exclusively vegetarian and vegan. So that all started in New York. <laughs> okay, now I want to thank you again for uh, coming and lending me your ear. And uh, I hope you'll drop by my stand. I'm right next to uh, uh, the... Uh, Animal Rights Group, uh, Compassion Over Killing, COK, and uh, we'll have a talk. Thanks. Thanks, Pam. Thank you, Thank you all for coming.